Welcome to the lecture Methodological Approach for Renewable Harvesting Optimization. Today's energy market is rapidly transforming with the infusion of new decentralized energy actors. In this scenario, buildings play a relevant role for the energy transition that European countries are facing. Considering the electrification of most of our daily consumptions, photovoltaics is an ideal technology to support the transition. For these reasons, in this lecture we will focus on photovoltaics as an example of how it is possible to approach the challenge of energy and economic optimization of renewable energy sources in the urban scenario. Traditional approaches for the design of renewable energy sources are usually based on cumulative yearly or sometimes monthly balances or a minimum threshold fixed by national standards. For example, in photovoltaics, a common strategy diffused in the residential sector in Italy is to install a 3 kW peak system for a single family house. A slightly more advanced approach is to cite the PV system to produce the same amount of energy that is yearly consumed by the building. In this case, the designer will always try to install the PV panels on the most irradiated surfaces of the building. What is missing with this approach? Time. The time of use and production of energy is not considered, self-consumption cannot be calculated and the analysis miss a lot of relevant details. The short time step approaches allow the possibility to consider the contemporaneity between energy production and energy consumption, to model in detail the behavior of storages, the thermal energy of the buildings and the behavior of people living or working in the buildings. It depends on the level of detail that the designer wants to achieve and the quality of the available inputs. However, it is important to highlight that such approaches unlock the possibility to introduce a time-dependent economic analysis. To clarify the concept, we will design the PV system of a single family house with both the approaches shown. Let's imagine we want to design the PV system of a single family house. The annual electric energy consumption is 200 and 700 kilowatt hours, and we can install PV modules with different orientation on the roof. Let's start with the cumulative approach. You start adding PV modules until the energy production is equal to the annual energy consumption. South facing orientation is the most convenient because it has the highest energy output per unit area. And the batteries? Here, you have not the needed information to properly cite the battery. You can calculate the average daily consumption and cite the battery accordingly or use some other rule of thumb. Basically, the pre-design phase is completed. You cite the PV system to produce the same amount of energy that the building consumes. But how much energy will be self-consumed and how much sent to the grid? How long does it take to recover the initial investment? What about the emission savings? With this approach, you cannot answer these questions. Let's assume now that you installed this PV system and a smart meter that allows you to visualize the, your energy consumption and PV production. Since you installed the south facing modules, the production cool will probably have a peak in the central hours of the day. Your energy consumption profile has two peaks in the morning and in the evening, while decreases during the day since you are at work and your kids are at school. Here, the time related problem comes out. Your peak of production occurs when your consumption are low. There are different strategies to mitigate this effect, such as demand side management or using batteries. Okay, but when you designed the PV system, you did not take into consideration this aspect. Imagine that the grid operator gives you 6 cents per, kilo, per kilowatt hour for the energy you set to the grid, and you buy energy at 20 cents per kilowatt hour in the evening. There is an imbalance from the economic point of view, and you will see this on the electricity bills that will not decrease as you expected. Let's try now with the short time step approach. As seen in the introduction, we can base our decisions on a more detailed energy and economic analysis. Thus, we start positioning some PV modules and we analyze the system with the short time step approach, trying to maximize self consumption and the money recovered every year. We can also try to move the PV modules in different positions. For example, west-facing modules have the peak of production in the afternoon. 
let's assume we choose a system as the one represented in figure. If we only look at the annual cumulative values, this solution is worse. But look at the next plot. The new production curve fits better the consumptions of the building. You can also choose the correct size of the battery to store the excess energy, improving cell consumption and cell sufficiency. Note that we use a simple case, but imagine designing an office or a multifamily building. The advantages will be even more relevant. Now you know what the advantages of the short time step method are. It could support your decision giving detailed information regarding the expected performances of the system. If you are designing a, sing a small single family house, you can proceed with some attempts. But if, if the system is large, this is not a viable option. At Hubrock Research, we automatize this process using an optimization algorithm to achieve a design target. The software we develop includes different tools, such as an irradiance simulator, an optimization algorithm, and a module for the simulation of the PV and battery system. During the years, we enriched the possibilities of the software, including different optimization targets. For example, the maximum economic outcome, the minimum levelized cost of electricity, beam features, and a calculator of the thermal demand of the building. During 2021, a free version of the tool will be published online. So check the website of the BIPB group at Eurac Research or the website of the Horizon 2020 project Energy Matching. To conclude, buildings have a key role in the transition toward more sustainable cities. For this reason, it is crucial to adopt the correct approaches and tools to ensure the optimal design of renewable projects.